Hey y'all, before we jump in, be sure to like the video, comment down below, and if you are new, hit subscribe to Blab with Brittany. My opinion. For those of you that think that gospel music has gone too far. My opinion. My opinion. Okay, you guys, so when you look at this clip that we're going to be talking about today, if any of you know who this guy is, please message me, comment, hit me up on Instagram, let me know so that I can tag this person and give him credit because I searched YouTube high and low for the last three days and I could not find who he is. The account that I found this topic in this clip on is Shan Body. I'm sure a lot of y'all follow her. Um, her and her husband did a sit down talk about this same clip on their Instagram and I actually saw both points that they were trying to make and they did not have this guy tagged but the husband did say that he watches him on YouTube so I'm sure it's like a popular YouTuber I just can't find his account I don't know his name they didn't have him tagged so if some of y'all know who he is please let me know so that I can give him credit where credit is due. Okay, so in today's video, we are going to be talking about disclosure and the responsibility of disclosure when it comes to knowing your status and sexual health. Um, the person in this clip, again, I don't know his name, so I can't refer to him by name. I feel terrible, but the person in this clip, his point of view is that the person with HIV is the topic at hand. The person with HIV, it's he feels that it's not their sole responsibility to disclose their status. Kind of like a, I don't want to say it the wrong way. So we're going to play the clip and then we'll talk about my interpretation of what he's saying and my views. So I'm going to insert the clip here. Reiterate. The sole responsibility of disclosure should not be left to people who are living with HIV. It should not. I shouldn't have to tell you that I'm positive. And to be honest, let's go a little deeper, because y'all like it deep. I'm going to give you to your nine inch deep. A lot of times folks not even asking, period. My research, I'm going to really blow y'all mind. It's actually, like, <laughs> it's actually less likely for you to contract HIV uh, with having sex with or engaging in sexual activity with somebody who is HIV positive and on me medication. So while we out here trying to make like people living with HIV, the boogie men and the boogie folks and out here doing all this, doing thriller <laughs> everywhere, in actuality, it's the stigma that's causing it. Because one, stigma is creating this, this energy against folks from getting tested. That should have been the one thing. Like, either way, if you test positive or negative, just think about that. Just think about that. And as black folks, as black and brown folks who are already living in underserved communities and are facing so many things, it's not doing us no justice to be out here engaging in stigmatizing. Okay, so I totally get what he's saying. I just think maybe the way it's worded was a little tricky. I feel like this is a tricky topic in reference to how he worded it, I feel like point blank period, as an adult, whenever you're about to get down with somebody, entering a sexual relationship with somebody, you are both responsible to have the conversation on each other's status. So I do agree with him there that it's not only the person who has HIV's responsibility, like, just because you have HIV or any STI, it's not just your responsibility because y'all are both adults. Y'all are both consenting to having sex. So y'all are both responsible to have that conversation. I totally agree with that point, but I don't agree with it kind of like as a don't ask, don't tell type of situation. I feel like if you are two adults, y'all should both be responsible for having that conversation. But if something were to happen where that conversation did not organically happen, I do feel like you should speak up and just say like, hey, this is going on. And then I also agree with the point that he made that people with HIV are being looked at as the boogeyman and... I 
I get it. I get what he's trying to say. Leave a comment down below if you get what he's trying to say. I don't want to say anything that's offensive to anyone, but I get it. It's like if you know your status, you know you have HIV, you know that you're taking the proper medication to where you cannot infect others, you're not the boogeyman that it seems in people's brain that are not educated on the topic versus someone that does not know their status but thinks that ignorance of knowing their status clears them. So like just because I don't think I have COVID or I don't have any symptoms of COVID doesn't mean that I don't have COVID. So I'm going around acting like I don't have COVID when I do have COVID. I just don't know that I have COVID versus somebody that does have COVID is at home quarantining so there, you know what I'm trying to say? I get what he's trying to say. So yeah, I think if you're gonna get freaky, you need to have the let's go get tested talk. And if that talk does not happen and you know that, I think you should always, whether you think you can infect someone or not, like I know with those medications, it's undetectable and all that stuff. I still think it's fair to give your sexual partner a choice. Whether they can be infected or not, they deserve a choice. Just like, I'm not gonna go there, but that'll be another topic. But I feel like you should give that person a choice and I do feel like it's not only your responsibility, it's both adults' responsibility, but if that topic doesn't come up, come on bring it up please so let me know in the comments what you think what you got out of the clips how you feel about it and i will see you guys in the next video bye she like friend you doing too much i'm like shut up you ain't doing enough oh you freaking, freaking bad that's too freaking, freaking bad since you freaking ass i like doing too much let's blast